Hello and welcome to the Skywall channel. Today, I'd like to introduce you guys and gals to Freedom, the $100 gaming PC to survive the cryptocurrency mining apocalypse. Freedom is the lone wanderer gaming PC in an apocalyptic world filled with inflated GPU prices, overpriced RAM, and doubtful hardware development. Basically, the theme of Freedom is to be the super cheap anti-minor gaming PC that you can build on your own for about 100 bucks. The parts that are inside Freedom were specifically chosen not to be in the purchasing eye of miners, so there is a method to my madness for choosing the hardware that's inside Freedom. And note, this isn't your regular $100 gaming PC stripped from a broken down Dell desktop with like a $40 GPU slapped in it. Oh no, Freedom is a one of a kind gaming computer. And just to give you guys a little taste of Freedom, the PC actually boasts four cores and, it, and is overclockable all for a hundred bucks. And of course, there's more than just that. I wanted Freedom to as well be a fully capable 1080p gaming PC to handle your everyday gaming tasks while not sacrificing too much for its $100 price tag since it is a super cheap gaming PC. So be sure to stay for the specs, building, and badass benchmarks to follow for Freedom. Anyways, huge thanks to Aki for sponsoring this video with their brand new $40 Aki G11 mechanical typewriter gaming keyboard. Also, on other notes, I opened up a Teespring store for some minimalistic PC hardware apparel that I've been working on kind of for the past month, and right now it's just featuring AMD and NVIDIA graphics cards, but if you guys really like the store and you guys really like the apparel that I have on there, then I'll see if I can maybe expand that to say like maybe some processors or motherboards later on, but if you guys are interested in maybe checking out some of the t-shirts that I have, then a link to the Teespring store will be in the description down below, so check that out. So I bet you guys are really anxious right now to know what's inside Freedom since I literally just hyped the crap out of him. As I noticed though, Freedom is made up of a combination of both used and brand new parts through some very good deals and lucky Craigslist finds, but I still intend for Freedom's build formula to be easily replicable for you guys who are interested in building your own sort of Freedom later on. Starting off with the processor, motherboard, and RAM, I managed to snag an Intel Q6600 MSI G41 MP28 motherboard and 8 gigabytes of Patriot DDR3 RAM, all for Craigslist, for $30 in cash. And I should say, in addition to this, the seller of the CPU, motherboard, and RAM combination also was willing to add in his old spare Hyper 212 Evo for free as well, which is pretty awesome. Next up on my Craigslist finds, another crazy deal I got was grabbing this like new Raidmax Ninja 2 for 20 bucks. The seller of this case really wanted to get his hands off of this case since it was an accidental purchase and the shipping return cost would actually cost more than the actual case itself so it's kind of like a win-win situation when it comes to this case. It's in excellent condition and I got it for a really awesome price. But now to more standard things, since the motherboard in this PC didn't have any SATA 3 ports, which means the point of getting a fancy SATA 3 hard drive that could go up to 6 gigabits per second was pretty worthless. So instead, I got a cheap $4 SATA 2 Western Digital Blue 320 gigabyte hard drive off of Craigslist. And since you're all probably wondering about it, for the graphics card, I snagged a GTX 760 for $40 off of Craigslist as well. Finally, for the last part of this build, the power supply I bought was an 80 plus EVGA 450 BV for 20 bucks, which I actually purchased way before this video on Newegg, and I even got two of them. This brings the total cost of freedom to $119, which yes, that is over the price limit, but this is the most reasonable PC I could have built with mostly using used parts that I could find locally while not going insane with my part choices, like say going with a 7 year old Radon HD 5970 for $45, which I did find one of those, and while that sounds super awesome, its age, drivers, very high TDP would have caused a lot of problems for the rest of Freedom's lightweight specs for gaming in the year 2017. But going back to the original point, why am I advertising this as an anti-miner survival gaming PC? Well, let me explain that method to my madness that I was talking about earlier in this video. Let's begin with the graphics card. 
Currently, a large majority of expensive and cheap AMD graphics cards out there, even including the older generations of AMD graphics cards, are being sold and used for GPU mining in pretty large quantities for ridiculously high prices. Even budget AMD cards that would have been great contenders for this $100 gaming PC if sold for around $50 like the R7 370 and R9 270X are still going for around $100 on eBay and Craigslist for being nearly 3 year old cards because despite their age, they're still great for cryptocurrency mining. So then, Scattervolt, what sort of really cheap graphics card can we find that is around $50, isn't too old to where it doesn't have relevant GPU technology to run modern games, and still has some firepower to game 2017 PC titles at 1080p? For that, let me introduce you to the 2GB Zotac GTX 760. Based off of the Kelper architecture, this mid-range graphics card was the king of mid-range PC gaming back in 2013. It's 2GB of GDDR5 memory, high overclockability, low TDP, and superior gaming performance over its AMD counterparts for its price, proved worthy for its $250 release date price tag. So why choose a card like the GTX 760 for an anti-minor gaming PC like this? Well one, it's an Nvidia card. And Nvidia cards are not as efficient per watt as an AMD card when it comes to hashing cryptocurrency. And two, this is a 700 series NVIDIA GPU, which means it's just out of range of the buying eye of miners due to its age, whereas something like from the 900 series released two years ago would be more appealing even if it was more expensive, just simply because it's newer. Now why did I choose that ancient Q6600 for this build? Because that thing is old. Well, that more or less is in this build because that in addition with the RAM and the motherboard was a killer deal, and of course, I could not leave it up for grabs. But for some epic background information on the Q6600, it's a quad-core processor clocking in at an unlocked clock speed of 2.4 GHz, which debuted 10 years ago back in 2007 based off of the Kensfield CPU architecture. This makes it sort of like the spiritual predecessor to the famous i5K edition processors that we all know today because of its 4 cores and overclockability. And those, for the most part, are the big highlights for Freedom. He's a quad-core, overclockable, 1080p-capable gaming machine for $100, whose part selection could not be farther than what miners are not looking for when it comes to building their next mining cryptocurrency rig. Anyways, building Freedom was pretty easy as well. There wasn't sort of any ridiculous modding or Frankensteining had to do to the build. Yo, so like, if this PC doesn't work, that's cause I just like totally mutilated this backplate for the Hyper 212 Evo. So I apologize in advance if the PC doesn't work, but yeah. However, installing the OS is another story. Because of how old that P28 chipset is, I actually had to install Windows 7 first, then through that, upgrade that to Windows 10, and that in all itself was a pretty huge inconvenience. Now with that all the way, let's get into the testing of this $100 gaming PC. Since this computer is both overclockable on the CPU and GPU platform, that only means I'm going to overclock the crap out of this computer. And the best I got out of this actually was overclocking the Q6600 to 3.0 gigahertz on a P28 motherboard in the BIOS, which actually when I got into Windows, turned out to be to about 2.75 gigahertz at full load, which I mean, you know what, that's pretty solid for a $100 gaming PC. Let's just leave it at that. Also made sure to push that GTX 760 to acceptable limits, which meant overclocking it through MSI's Afterburner software to about a plus 120 MHz core clock speed and a plus 325 MHz memory clock speed. Anyways, let's get into the benchmarks.
So the performance of Freedom is pretty mixed. Surprisingly, Rainbow Six Siege performed the best out of this entire game list, and CSGO actually didn't perform that well on this system, which made me really surprised. I'd say the biggest issue for Freedom was that he had an unstable frame rate for a lot of his games. Even though Freedom averaged some games very well for a $100 gaming computer, the mins and maxes were all over the place and nothing was that staple in gaming. I know for a fact that the GTX 760 in this build would have been GOAT for making this the ultimate $100 system, but even though I had a lot of faith in the Q6600 in this build, I don't think it delivered that well for CPU, quite frankly. For being overclockable, it couldn't reach 3 gigahertz because of that budget motherboard we used in this build, whereas if I had like a P35 motherboard that would have been more expensive, then we probably could have pushed that Q6600 to about 3 gigahertz and above easily, which would have probably resulted in better gaming performance. Despite that though, out of all the budget builds I've made recently over the summer, Freedom was actually really snappy for his age inside the OS, and I think we can attribute that to the quad-core processor in the system. Performing tons of multitasking stresses like opening up 10 Chrome tabs while at the same time opening up Steam, Origin, and Uplay did not slow down Freedom. And even though we're working with a 10 year old motherboard, I was actually extremely surprised to see that my Steam download speeds were still just as fast as my main rig hooked up to LAN to the same router for being such an old motherboard, which is pretty incredible. Anyways though, that is it for today's video. Thank you so much for watching this video. And like always, make sure to like, favorite, subscribe and all that. And this is the Scuttable TV channel, signing out.